your wife pretended to be quiet for a very long time, but then you found out that this is very far from the truth. She turned out to be completely different from the person you thought she was and she was capable of very heinous acts. Gentlemen, are you familiar with the situation? This is the story about that. My name is David, and I will tell you about myself. I have a wife named Hazel, and her paths crossed about seven years ago. We both come from the Midwest, where our upbringing was associated with a pious Christian faith that put God above everything, including family. Our shared devotion to religious beliefs led to the fact that we began to attend church together every Sunday, which contributed to the emergence of a deep bond between us. Having started our journey together, Hazel and I began to dream and make plans for the future. My career as an engineer flourished, promising a bright and happy life ahead. At the same time, Hazel was successfully coping with her role as a software sales representative for a well-known technology company located in Atlanta. Our professional successes reflected our personal ambitions, fueling our enthusiasm for what lies ahead. Even before we exchanged vows, my parents gave us a wonderful gift, a three-bedroom house that they bought for me after graduating from college. They diligently saved up a considerable amount of money and wanted to share their success and happiness with us during their lifetime. Thus, they challenged the generally accepted norms, realizing that many people transfer their earthly possessions only after death, missing the joy that can be obtained by watching loved ones enjoy the fruits of their generosity in real time. My parents chose a different approach, they shared their blessings during their lifetime and received great joy from it. When Hazel and I started our married life, we were lucky enough to receive this wonderful gift, a gesture that brought great happiness to my parents. Hazel and I exchanged vows a little over five years ago, and since then, our life has been like an eternal honeymoon. Our bond was deep, and our love for each other was obvious to everyone who knew us. Friends often admired and envied us, marveling at our closeness and affection. Our intimate life was full-fledged, and we really felt like a second half. The biggest blessing for us was the appearance of two beautiful twin girls with golden curls shining like the rays of the sun. Their appearance has completely changed our life, filling it with joy and meaning. Our attention has completely shifted to creating a caring and loving home for our precious daughters. Our priorities were aimed at educating them and providing them with everything they needed. To some, our way of life may seem mundane and uninteresting, but for us, it was a source of satisfaction and self-realization. Our days were filled with the simple joys of family life, and we treasured every moment spent together. In the evenings, we habitually enjoyed homemade food, feeling the comfort of our own home. Sometimes on Friday and Saturday, we went out into nature in search of a change of scenery and possibly a new restaurant, but our priorities lay beyond social life and the latest fashion trends, which our peers were often fond of. Hazel held conservative views on fashion, preferring modest outfits both at work and at home. She believed that everything seductive and provocative should be accessible only to my eyes and our bedroom should remain a sanctuary for intimacy and passion. Trust and complete openness were the foundation of our relationship. We were not shy about sharing anything with each other, which contributed to the emergence of a deep sense of security and mutual understanding. Hazel was one of those women who openly expressed their affection. Her language of love was physical touches and affectionate gestures, which she freely and without hesitation bestowed on me. Her warmth and tenderness manifested in every hug and every kiss, strengthening our common bond. I loved the way Hazel expressed her love in gentle touches, sweet kisses, and warm hugs. Every communication with her filled my heart with joy, and I treasured our deep connection. Our relationship flourished thanks to open communication, and we were happy to express our feelings and emotions to each other. Raising twins undoubtedly requires a lot of effort, but I gladly accepted all the difficulties. I was glad of any opportunity to spend time with our beloved kids and readily helped Hazel to relieve stress or stress. We worked as a unit, always finding ways to overcome any obstacles and disagreements before they escalated into disappointment. The ability to overcome difficulties together strengthened our family and ensured a harmonious life. When Hazel and our adorable twin girls were with me, I couldn't have dreamed of a better existence. They brought immense joy and meaning to our days, and I treasured every moment we spent together as a family. Hazel received an unexpected message that she needed to take part in the most important three-day event. Unfortunately, several colleagues got sick with the virus, and Hazel had no choice but to go to the exhibition. 
It was very hard for her to be away from her family, and she made every effort to avoid it. She even turned to her boss twice, begging to find an alternative, but the severity of the situation left her no other way out. Dear, I'm very sorry that it happened, she said with a note of sadness in her voice. The fact that I left you and the girls for three days breaks my heart. I did my best to avoid it, but my boss insisted that we all attend the event. You know how much I hate being away from all of you. When Hazel started to get ready for the trip, I reassured her that everything would be fine during her absence. I reminded her that our love and support would remain unchanged even at a distance. We will miss you very much, I whispered, hugging her soothingly. But we understand the importance of your work and will be here looking forward to your return. Together, we recognized the temporary nature of her absence and realized the power of our love. We convinced each other that our love would overcome the physical distance, giving comfort and confidence until we were reunited again. We stood side by side, giving her our reliable support. I helped her sort out her things, ensured their safe placement in the car provided by the company for the trip to the airport. As already mentioned, our marriage was flawless, built on trust and mutual understanding. I had never noticed any signs of flirting or behavior deviating from the role of a loving and devoted spouse. There was complete openness in our relationship, we trusted each other implicitly. We were connected by our love for our children. We constantly participated in joint events. Therefore, when I received a message from my colleague and close friend, it was not easy for me to accept and digest its contents. On the second evening of the exhibition, a message appeared on my phone from my colleague Sam, who, as it turned out, was attending a cybersecurity event in Atlanta. Hi David, how's your weekend going, my friend? I'm having a great time with my girls. Hazel is at the exhibition, and I am enjoying the moment of communication with my favorite girls. Weren't you supposed to be at the security convention this weekend? I asked. Sam replied, yes, I'm really at the convention you mentioned. That Hazel is at the exhibition, can you tell me the name of this event? In response, I said, well, she's in Atlanta this week, but I'm not really sure what kind of exhibition she's attending. Her company is currently showcasing its products at the convention center. Curious, I was sitting at the dinner table with my daughters when I received a message from Sam urging me to be on my guard. My heart started pounding wildly as I prepared to take in all the news he was about to share. When I read his message, I was overcome with shock and fear. Sam sent me two photos in a video, making me freeze in place. In the first photo, my wife was wearing an unfamiliar outfit, a dress so short that I had never seen her wear something like that. The neckline fell lower than one would have thought and revealed her from a side that I had never seen her from. The hairstyle and makeup were carefully executed, emphasizing her stunning appearance. I couldn't remember a single moment during our entire relationship when she looked so irresistibly attractive. Just the sight of that first photo left me speechless. At first, I convinced myself that this must be a mistake, a woman with a striking resemblance to Hazel. It couldn't possibly be her. I giggled inwardly, imagining how great it would be if Hazel ever dressed so provocatively. But my laughter stopped abruptly when the next photo appeared on the screen. It was a close-up of Hazel sitting in close proximity to Jonathan, one of her bosses at work, and at the same time, their faces were frozen with an expression of tenderness for each other. Paralyzed by shock, I remained motionless, unable to even blink, until another photo appeared. This photo showed Hazel looking into Jonathan's eyes with a radiant smile. At the sight of this image, a wave of disbelief swept through my veins, and I desperately tried to find a rational explanation. But all hopes were dashed when a few minutes later, another message came, this time with a short but devastating video clip. It showed my wife passionately kissing Jonathan, wrapping her arms around his neck, and his hand was on her right breast. At that moment, it seemed to me that my whole world had collapsed. Tears flowed down my face, my heart was pounding wildly. A wave of disgust swept over me. In the midst of this horror, another message from Sam appeared, in which his concern was visible. Dude, are you okay? What should I do? Do you want to see her right now? Feeling mixed emotions, I decided to immediately call Hazel and find out her whereabouts. When I dialed her number, my heart pounded in my chest, and each ring increased my anxiety. Eventually, the call switched to voicemail, and I left a message expressing my longing for her presence and hoping that she was enjoying the evening. 
It was with a heavy heart that I contacted Sam, informing him of my attempt to contact her. I just called her, Sam. What the hell is going on? I asked, disbelief evident in my voice. Sam's remorse was palpable when he replied, David, I am truly sorry about the situation. I saw her take her phone out of her purse, look at the caller ID, and return it without answering. I can't believe it's really her. I've never seen her behave or dress like that. David, I never realized how attractive your wife is. I'm sorry, friend, I didn't mean to say that, Sam said, regret sounding in his words. At that moment of understanding, I replied, it's alright, Sam. Thank you for being honest with me and not hiding it. You are a true friend. Thanking him for his frankness, I told Sam that I would sort out the situation myself and that he did not need to interfere anymore. Worried about his safety, I warned him, if possible, it is better not to interfere. Let me know if anything else happens, but please don't waste any more time tracking her. Then I'll do it myself, my friend. Sam asked me how I was feeling, to which I replied, with a heavy heart, No, I'm far from fine, but I know what I need to do, and I'll take care of it. I am still in a state of perplexity, and it will take some time to comprehend everything, but I assure you, I will do it. Thanks again for Sam's support, I poured myself a strong drink and settled down in the dimly lit living room, trying to comprehend how my life had been destroyed in just 20 minutes. I had no idea that our relationship was under threat. How long ago did this happen? Could I have ignored the signs like that? No, she never gave me any reason to suspect otherwise. In fact, over the past six months, our intimacy had become even stronger, and she had shown even more love than before. None of this made any sense to me, and I was struggling to make sense of what was happening. Over the next hour, Sam shared several more photos and videos. Among them was a short video in which they were captured in an intimate dance and his hand was on her back. In another video, they passionately kissed on the dance floor, not paying attention to others. And in a lonely photo, they were captured in a deep, continuous embrace, seemingly not noticing that the music had already stopped playing. Hazel got in touch with me at 10 o'clock in the evening, after the last photo was received. I took a deep breath, deciding to keep my composure. I didn't want to give away any hint that I knew or suspected about her actions. Hello, dear. I'm sorry I missed your previous call. I was busy with dinner and couldn't talk. I long for your presence, my love, and I would like to be next to you, wrapped in the warmth of our embrace, showering you with kisses, my lying wife said in a sweet voice. Everything is fine with us. The girls are just lovely, and I will definitely send you some photos. They miss their mom very much and are really looking forward to your return, she added calmly. I informed her that everything was fine with us. I tried to rearrange my schedule to come home tomorrow, but my boss insisted that I stay here. It's like she said with sadness. It hurts me to be away from you, my dear. We will happily celebrate your return. Have you finished your business for the night? I asked. Yes, I'm already getting ready for bed, looking forward to a busy working day tomorrow. I love you, my baby, and I promise to call you tomorrow. Good night, Hazel, I said, with tears streaming down my face. Every word I said was sincere, my love for her was immeasurable, and I desperately wished that all this turned out to be just a terrible nightmare. When the clock struck midnight, I lay in bed, unable to find solace and sleep. My mind was swarming with thoughts about whether she was really in her room and what she might be doing. The answer to my thoughts came in the form of another message from Sam. There was a picture of my wife, Hazel, and Jonathan sitting together on a sofa, apparently in the lobby of the hotel. The picture captured the intimate moment of their passionate kiss, her hands tightly wrapped around his neck. They looked like newlyweds, not shy about showing their affection in public. This is the last one, buddy. I'm finishing it. Looks like she's going to be busy, Sam informed me. Despite the fact that it was hard for me to watch these shots, I expressed gratitude for his efforts. Let him go. This is entirely her business, and you don't need to interfere. Let everything be as it will be, I replied, overwhelmed with grief. Thanks again, I fell asleep painfully, realizing that the love of my life had betrayed me. Gradually, sleep eased the pain and tears, giving me a temporary respite until the next morning when I woke up. 
I saw a whole series of affectionate text messages from Hazel, decorated with hearts, kisses, and emoticons. She confessed her love and said how much she missed me and our girls. Her behavior was unexpectedly sweet and loving, as if nothing had happened. Doubts arose in my head. Perhaps she suffers from dissociative disorder and is not aware of her actions. She may have been unknowingly drugged with illegal substances. Desperate to find answers, I began a search for understanding. But in the process of searching, I realized that it was necessary to recognize the harsh reality and prepare for the upcoming path. In a few days, she will return home, leaving me alone with her emotions. Our daily conversations continued as if nothing had changed. She missed all of us and was looking forward to returning. I couldn't determine which aspect of her act outraged me more, her betrayal and infidelity with another man, or her dishonesty and deception. It seemed to me that she was playing with my emotions, and the pain from her kiss with Jonathan was no less excruciating. Having received a message from Sam, which served as a catalyst, I quickly moved to action. Using my technical experience working in the family, I equipped her phone with a program that served as protection and allowed me to determine its location in case of loss. Choosing the latest version of the program, I diligently installed it and even provided Hazel with instructions on how to use it. It is important to emphasize that it was not my intention to spy on her, but fate decreed otherwise. It became clear last night. The events of last night destroyed my trust and brought me to a place I could never have imagined. The safety and well-being of our girls became a priority for me. I had to protect them from any harm. Fortunately, caring for and communicating with our three-year-old twins became a source of comfort against the backdrop of a crumbling marriage. Cooking breakfast, cleaning up after them, diving into the world of their dolls gave me great joy and precious minutes. If you have never faced the responsibility of caring for energetic twins, then let me assure you that this is an intense physical workout. By two o'clock in the afternoon, I had successfully put the girls to bed after a hearty lunch. Having refreshed myself in the shower and tidied up the house, I was finally able to collect my thoughts. Hazel sent me six affectionate messages, assuring me that she would call at five in the evening as soon as the working day was over. When I read her messages, curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to log into the cloud from my laptop. After logging into her account, I began to view everything that had been uploaded since the activation of the recording program. What I found stunned me and left me speechless. The messages she sent Jonathan were frank and full of desire. Several messages contained phrases such as last night was incredible, baby and can't wait to be with you again tonight. At the end, Hazel's name was signed, confirming the bitter truth. Can we retire to my room when it's over, before dinner? She asked eagerly. She replied, sure, but I'll need to call my spouse before we leave. I'll be ready by 5.15. Then she asked the question that struck me to the core. Does your spouse suspect anything about us? To which she replied firmly, Absolutely not. He believes in my love for him, and I will try to keep it that way. In the future, our secret will remain hidden from him indefinitely. We've been able to hide it for more than six months now, and he still doesn't notice anything. Trust me, I know how to act in this situation. Overcome with anger, I reluctantly stopped reading. A thought invaded my consciousness. Did she completely trust him too? Was I really that naive and stupid? How could I be such a fool? Gathering my strength, I looked into other files. And what I found almost knocked me out of my chair. Jonathan sent her a candid photo that made me feel disgusted and revolted. I was forced to imagine his vulgar image in vivid colors. Knowing that he sent it to my wife filled me with rage. I dropped my laptop on a chair stood up abruptly, and let out a piercing scream. In a fit of uncontrollable anger, I grabbed a lamp from the table and threw it violently against the wall, breaking it into countless pieces. The anger that I had been able to contain before now completely engulfed me. When I was on the verge of breaking another lamp, there was a sharp cry from our girls, which broke the haze of anger that enveloped me. Their innocent screams brought me back to reality. Instantly regaining my composure, I hurried into the bedroom, hugged both girls, calming them down until the tears subsided and they calmed down. I let them play in the living room, and I sat down in an armchair to drink another strong drink, carefully removing the glass fragments left after my previous outburst. In my understanding, the marriage had come to an end, and it was time to act. 
I didn't have the strength to endure their conversations anymore or dig through the remaining downloaded files that had accumulated in the cloud. I decided to take a strategic approach and play along with Hazel. As she deceived me, so I will repeat her actions, pretending to be a devoted husband and secretly thinking over my further actions. My initial plan called for contacting a divorce lawyer, engaging a private investigator, and developing a strategy to secure custody of our precious girls. Their well-being became my primary interest, my only anchor in a world turned upside down. During a phone call scheduled for 5 p.m., she greeted me with tenderness and asked, Hello dear, how are our girls? Do they miss their mom? Lord, my thoughts are busy with you all day, my dear. I'm looking forward to the moment when I get home I can take you in my arms. I long to give you the most tender and passionate kiss you've ever experienced. I played along with her, responding with words of love. Oh baby, you occupy my thoughts all day long, and I can't contain my excitement when I can hug my adored and alluring wife. We'll meet soon, my love. I miraculously managed to remain calm as the call lasted exactly 15 minutes. At 17.15, she ended the conversation with the words, I love you, David. It's time for me to leave, the bus to the hotel is already leaving, and I need to catch it. I'll send you a message later. I love you, she said easily, uttering another lie. Deception seemed natural to her. I love you too, baby, more than you can imagine, I replied, hiding the pain caused by her lies and infidelity. But now the pain has turned into contempt, anger, and a burning desire for revenge. I was determined to destroy this woman and make her suffer for her treacherous actions despite the huge love for her in my heart. It was undoubtedly the most difficult task I have ever faced. Arriving home when I picked her up from the airport and she happily hugged me, fulfilling the promise of that long-awaited kiss, I couldn't help but wonder if she was an amazing actress or if her love for me was really that deep. I couldn't help but wonder if she was just using Jonathan for physical intimacy. Her actions continued to puzzle and confuse me. She spent an hour with the girls, enjoying their company. But that evening, when we were lying in bed together, she showered me with excessive caresses and repeatedly told me how much she missed our family, despising a long separation. She claimed that all her thoughts were occupied with the desire to be with me right here at this moment, snuggled up to each other. He showed tenderness, love, and completely changed compared to the woman I encountered at the exhibition. I also found solace in the moments when we were together, enjoying our shared love. It was a beautiful facade which I sought to make authentic because it was my cherished desire to spend my life with her in this way. But deep down, I knew that this farce would soon come to an end. Despite my conclusions, I hid my knowledge, sincerely giving her my love and satisfying her every night. To any observer, our relationship seemed to be something extraordinary, causing a feeling of envy for our common love. This image persisted for three months, and I was vigilant to ensure that there were no signs of treason but nothing indicated it. She invariably returned home from work at the same time every evening, leaving no reason for suspicion. There were no suspicious phone calls or text messages that could raise additional doubts. At times, I even allowed the thought that maybe I had made a mistake and that over time everything would fall into place. But a phone call from Mr. Bryce, a private investigator, destroyed this fragile hope. We agreed to meet at his office in the city center in the afternoon. As I walked to the meeting, I could not get rid of the anxiety that settled in me. Upon arrival, I was taken to the conference room where Mr. Bryce greeted me. Good afternoon, David. I am glad to see you again, he said. I reciprocated. I'm glad to see you too, Mr. Bryce. His grim expression hinted at an unpleasant revelation. David, I would like to tell you more pleasant news, but unfortunately, I have some unpleasant information. Are you ready to see what I have discovered? I sighed reluctantly, agreeing. Deep down, I had a glimmer of hope, but the reality reminded me of Hazel and Jonathan's undoubted mutual desire. When Mr. Bryce handed me a thick leather folder with three rings, I noticed various sections marked with bookmarks, text messages, transcripts of voice messages, video recordings, transcripts of telephone conversations, and photos. A wave of confusion overwhelmed me and I shared my bewilderment with Mr. Bryce. Despite closely monitoring Hazel's actions and behavior over the past three months, nothing unusual has happened. Despite being the epitome of an ideal wife and lover, everything seemed inexplicable. 
Hoping for a glimmer of clarity, I let Mr. Bryce lead me through the overwhelming evidence. My heart fluttered when I made a conscious decision not to delve into cloud files, desperately praying for a positive result. But as expected, my prayers went unanswered. The folder contained 75 pages of incriminating text messages and another 25 pages of damning emails. In the 75-page photo section, Hazel and Jonathan were captured together entering and exiting hotel rooms, with each picture carefully time-stamped. In addition, there were 82 videos contained here, which further confirmed the indisputable truth. For the past three months, Hazel and Jonathan have been visiting the same motel at least four times a week. The indisputable proof of their meetings is detailed photos taken daily at 1300 hours. On average, their meetings lasted about two hours each time. But over the past month, another disturbing revelation has emerged. It turned out that my wife was regularly met by two different men who also came to her motel four times a week. Do you know this person? The detective asked me. Good God, this is Jason Sinclair, the CEO of her company. I exclaimed in shock. So you're saying that she's involved with two men, one of whom holds such a high position? I asked in shock. I'm sorry to inform you, but this information is obtained from text messages, evidence gathered from phone calls, video recordings, and other sources, indicating that he entered into an intimate relationship with your wife, Mr. Bryce stated bluntly. In one of the videos entitled Balcony, he and your wife are engaged in intimate activities while she provocatively hangs over the railing. It seems they considered themselves above suspicion, not knowing that their actions were being recorded. When Mr. Bryce played the video on an 80-inch display, their faces were captured in close-up with high-resolution video and clear sound. Watching Hazel, my wife, lean over the railing covering the CEO, I couldn't help but feel a sickening feeling rise in me. Overwhelmed with emotion, I left the conference room for a short time to recover, returning with renewed determination. I encouraged them to continue working, wanting to find out the truth about Hazel's actions. Another video titled Balcony 2 testifies to your wife's relationship with Jason. I sincerely apologize for introducing you to these unpleasant testimonies, but given that their meeting took place in public, these videos may be crucial in possible divorce proceedings and child custody procedures, the detective said confidently. When I presented this evidence to my lawyer, she was amazed at the huge amount of data we collected. She couldn't believe that there were no signs of Hazel's infidelity in her house. Despite more and more evidence, she continues to maintain the facade of a loving wife and devoted mother, pretending that everything is in perfect order. At the meeting with my lawyer, we discussed various actions that we could take based on the documents I provided. Realizing the severity of the situation, I instructed the lawyer to immediately begin the divorce process. When I left the office, I was overcome by a sense of completeness. Deep down, I knew it was over even before these meetings, but watching these videos destroyed all the remnants of hope for reconciliation. I was overcome with confusion and thought about the question, who is this woman whom I thought I knew so well? After putting the girls to bed, we settled down on the couch and decided to watch some old movie. I planned the conversation carefully. While the movie was going on, I casually mentioned to Hazel that there was a girl working in my office who had been showing interest in me for the past few months. Grinning, I asked her to introduce me to another woman. In response, she gave me a piercing look, her eyes narrowed. Really? Who is she? She asked in a serious tone, with a stern expression on her face. She warned me, if I ever catch you thinking about being with her, I will make you regret it. You belong only to me and no one else. Despite my attempt to keep the conversation going, it was clear that Hazel wasn't joking. She made her position on cheating very clear, which surprised me. It seemed hypocritical to me that she was so indignant about this when she herself had a secret relationship with two men. It's infuriating, David. Why didn't you tell me about her behavior earlier? What's her name? Hazel demanded. Calm down, she's just an intern who likes to flirt. I completely ignore her advances. What about you, Hazel? You're the most attractive woman in your office. Are you saying that no one is flirting with you? I asked. Of course not. They all know that I'm married and would never betray you, Hazel said confidently. In all the time of our marriage, have you ever thought about being with someone else or have you done any questionable things, even a friendly kiss? Have you never been unfaithful to me, my love? 
I asked seriously. At that moment, she became very angry. Are you serious? Are you honestly asking me this? I am constantly expressing my love for you. I'm always there for you, and the thought of being with another man never crossed my mind. I can't believe you asked me that, she exclaimed. I apologized and agreed with her, continuing to watch the movie. A smile appeared on my face. I couldn't help but admire her acting skills. She was so convincing that I began to doubt my own thoughts. Now I understand why she was so successful in her work, I thought. When the tension subsided, she pressed against my shoulder again, and I felt the right moment. I reached for the phone, opened the text app, and selected a photo of Hazel and Jonathan frozen in a passionate kiss on the dance floor, his hand on her back. I was engrossed in the picture when she noticed that I was distracted. What are you up to, David? Why aren't you focused on the movie, she asked. Because what I know is undoubtedly real, I said cryptically. What do you mean? Hazel asked indignantly. I turned down the volume of the movie and handed her the photo. At that moment, she froze, trying to answer something, but the words did not come out of her lips. I continued to look at the picture, noticing, wow, what an intense and seductive kiss you have with John. She was desperately trying to justify herself. Where did you get this picture? She asked. I had lunch with my friend Sam Stein at the same restaurant where he noticed you with that man. He texted me to clarify if it's really you or if it's just a strange resemblance. Undoubtedly, it was you. He sent this photo as proof. Besides, I have to admit that this dress looks incredibly seductive on you. I've never seen you in such a short and revealing outfit before. I guess you wanted to impress your boyfriend. Oh, you were going to explain this situation. I can't wait to hear your version, I said, putting the phone back on my lap. Dear, we only danced one dance, and he drank some alcohol. When the song ended, he abruptly grabbed me and started kissing me. The photo does not show that immediately after that, I slapped him and made a scandal. I would never allow myself to do this of my own free will. I bought this dress for a business dinner, but until now, I had no idea that it would be so revealing. I'm truly sorry, dear. I understand that such situations can arise unexpectedly, and I assure you it was the only case, Hazel explained. I sensed that she was not quite sure of herself and reassured her by saying, Yes, baby, he will never dare to do that again. The movie resumed, and I leaned back in my chair, preferring to be silent, knowing full well that Hazel was worried. After a few minutes, I took out my phone and opened a video of them sitting on the couch, and his hand secretly gets under her skirt. I started looking. She looked at me, and fear was reflected in her face. What are you watching now? She asked nervously. I reminded her of the night she called me, saying she'd had a rough day and was back in her room, ready to sleep. She whispered, it's ironic because two hours after our conversation, I received another message from Sam, and this time it contained a video. Do you want to see? I asked, pressing the play button and showing her the video. I can't wait to hear your explanation, I said and a smile appeared on my face. My anger dissipated, replaced by a mixture of contempt and amusement at her reaction. Oh my God, David, I am so sorry. After our conversation, Jonathan called me and informed me that we needed to discuss an urgent matter concerning one of our accounts. He insisted on meeting early in the morning. He asked me to meet him in the lobby to prepare for the upcoming meeting. I hardly remember the events shown in the video because I drank a lot and was in a state of strong alcoholic intoxication. You know how I get when I drink too much. I understand that the video seems accusatory, but nothing happened beyond that moment. I distinctly remember telling him to stop, confirming my commitment to our marriage, and leaving. There was nothing, my love. You have to believe me, Hazel explained. But the problem is that I have always trusted you, and you have deceived me twice in the last 20 minutes in serious matters. Can you try to understand my point of view? To my horror, I was left alone and saw photos in which my wife, dressed in an extremely provocative outfit, is engaged in intimate relations with her boss. Needless to say, this discovery caused me mixed feelings. Honey, why did you decide to hide this from me for three months? I can't help but doubt your intentions. To be honest, I was hoping that you would be open and honest about this situation. 
Our relationship has always been built on trust and transparency, and I wanted to make sure that this is still the case. Unfortunately, it looks like things have changed between us. Now I wonder if you're hiding something else from me. Is there a permanent romance between you and him? Do you really love him? I enjoyed teasing her and enjoying her bewilderment. Bursting into tears, she desperately confessed her love to me. But, Hazel, I'm begging you to stop repeating those words. I admit that you love me, and I still love you, but this feeling does not negate the significance of these photos. I need to understand why this happened, and if there are any other lies that you are hiding from me, unbeknownst to her, I turned on the voice recorder on my phone. David, please listen to me, she begged. In fact, there was nothing. Yes, I admit that I kissed him, as you saw, but that was all, and I repeatedly asked him to stop. I do not know what Sam witnessed and what he conveyed to you, but I urge you to trust me. Please stop crying, my love. I believe you, but I'm puzzled by your choice of clothes. It's unusual for you to dress like this, and the hairstyle and makeup were done differently. Is this all for him? You haven't answered my question. Do you have feelings for him? Are you thinking of leaving me for him? No, David, she gasped between sobs. I only love you. I never want to lose you. Nothing happened, and I can't explain why I dressed like that. I must admit, this is not typical for me. Perhaps because all the other women were dressed that way, and I also wanted to feel attractive. I can't fully explain it, I guess I felt a little insecure, Hazel tried to justify herself. I understand this point of view, and it makes sense, but then why didn't you tell me about the closeness between Jonathan and yourself, especially since nothing significant happened and you put an end to it? I didn't want to upset you, after all, he's my boss, and I couldn't afford to put my job at risk. If something had really happened, I would have told you right away, you know, she explained. I kissed her gently, hugging her, giving her the opportunity to vent her emotions through tears. This marked the beginning of a month-long epic in which I sought revenge. She showed increased passion, desperately trying to convince me that I was her only love interest. This farce went on every night for several weeks, her acting abilities were pushed to the limit, and I just enjoyed the spectacle. The next morning, I couldn't resist the temptation to check the cloud for her communication with Jonathan, and unsurprisingly, she didn't disappoint. I saw their correspondence. To my horror, someone took a picture of us together at the convention and sent it to David. By coincidence, his acquaintance happened to be in the restaurant and became my witness of our behavior. I'm not sure about the extent of his knowledge, but the video shows us involved in a passionate kiss, with your hand on my back. Now that you mention it, I vaguely recall a man across from us who seemed to be recording what was happening on his phone. Although at that moment I treated it as inconsequential. What actions did David take when he found out about this? Surprisingly, none. I managed to convince him that there was nothing between us to prevent further altercation. He still doesn't notice that there is a relationship between you and me. I manipulate the situation, blaming everything on alcohol, and make amends to him. Fortunately, he is easily persuaded, but we have to be careful, my love. Our plans for tomorrow remain in force. I'll meet you at the usual time, one o'clock in the afternoon. I love you, darling. I love you too. When I read the last message, I was seized by a deep silence, and a whirlwind of reflections swirled in my head. It became clear that I had played a fool, becoming a victim of my own naivety. But the thirst for revenge was too intoxicating, and I decided not to stop there, but I preferred to enjoy the unfolding spectacle of Hazel's cunning, delving into the depths of her deception. With special care, I dealt with financial issues, ensuring myself full control over the situation. To do this, it was necessary to transfer money, close various accounts, and take measures to protect against possible damage that she could cause. I decided to keep my main Visa card but set a much lower limit of $2,500 for it, which allowed me to limit the potential damage. Hazel didn't understand the depth of my suffering and underestimated my ability to act. I turned to a lawyer to make sure that being the rightful owner of the house before our marriage, I would not be forced to leave it after she received the divorce papers. With this knowledge, I carefully prepared the infamous email that was soon to be sent out to her unsuspecting acquaintances. This digital message will contain a selection of incriminating videos, text messages, 
and photos carefully selected to expose her deception and betrayal in front of all her friends, relatives, and colleagues. In addition, I painstakingly collected duplicate folders with three rings, reflecting my own suffering, in order to pass them on to Mrs. Sinclair and Mrs. Wilkes, giving them the opportunity to witness the pain that I experienced. Simultaneously with the delivery of legal documents to all interested parties, I planned to make a carefully orchestrated disclosure in cooperation with my lawyer. We were preparing to file public civil lawsuits against Jonathan, Hazel's boss, and Jason, the CEO of a well-known technology company where they worked. Given the company's status as one of the largest technology structures on the East Coast, my lawyer especially wanted to expose the involvement of the CEO before making our allegations public. We intended to submit to the company a settlement proposal which would emphasize that the CEO and managers of the company allegedly committed intimate harassment against their employees. At the same time, we engaged lawyers for children's affairs to develop a strategy and prepare the necessary documents for obtaining full custody of our children. I scrupulously collected evidence files and documents, making sure that Hazel was closely connected with the upcoming investigation. Despite the tumultuous circumstances, the following weeks seemed deceptively normal. We continued to prioritize our children and spent time together as if nothing had happened. We even had dinner together, having conversations in which we skillfully avoided the unspoken elephant in the room. I got a certain satisfaction from my silence, knowing that it must be driving Hazel to the verge of insanity since she still does not know about my thoughts and intentions. But I decided to add some humor to our dynamics by asking a few intriguing questions. So, Hazel, I asked casually, did your boss make any signs of attention to you after the convention? Is there anything you'd like to share with me from Hazel's conversations with Jonathan? I realized that they continue to meet daily at the hotel. It amazed me how easily she kept her composure and came up with lies. Watching her reaction became an interesting activity, and I even learned to determine when she was going to cheat on me. When I asked her questions, she answered calmly, denying any inappropriate actions. She gave the appearance of a normal life, as if nothing had happened between them. She insisted that their relationship remains strictly professional, emphasizing that they have a busy work schedule and minimal communication and connection with their projects. I sat there, still smiling but more and more amazed that a woman with whom I had children together and whom I once considered the love of my life could weave such a complex web of deception. It was frustrating to watch how easily Hazel manages to deceive me with her lies. The next morning, I calmly got ready for work and left without further discussion. Soon, the sheriff abruptly entered the office of Tricom International, determined to find Mr. Sinclair. Sheriff Clark burst into Sinclair's office and handed him a sealed envelope. Mr. Sinclair, you are officially notified, he announced. Left alone in the spacious office, Sinclair, clutching the envelope with trembling hands, felt an overwhelming sense of fear. After meticulously reading the complaint for the third time, he urgently instructed the secretary to call Jason to his office. While the secretary was dialing the number, Jason found himself in conversation with the same sheriff who handed him his own complaint. He hurried into Sinclair's office, and both men were struck with shock and confusion. How could this happen, Jason? If my wife finds out about this, it will be my undoing, and it will be your fault, Sinclair exclaimed, his voice filled with despair. You assured me that these women would never expose us. Fix it, Jason, or I promise you your whole family will be destroyed. Do you understand the gravity of the situation? Jonathan rushed out of his office, anxiously waiting for the arrival of the elevator, which was supposed to take him to the twelfth floor to find Hazel. Bursting into her office, he saw that she was sitting at her desk, and tears were streaming down her face. Hazel, what's wrong? What is it? he asked with concern in his voice. How did he reveal our secret? What are you talking about? Jonathan asked, disbelief in his voice. Hazel, visibly shaken, replied, I've just been handed the divorce papers, and when you say us, it looks like you and Sinclair are also involved in a civil trial because of what happened. We're not sure about the evidence he has, but it should be more substantial than the two images you stumbled upon. You have to convince David to back off, otherwise, Sinclair will bring terror on us and my family. Hazel paled as she realized the gravity of the situation. My God, this is a disaster. I'll go to him. I'll make him understand. I will do whatever it takes to put an end to this. 
Go home, Hazel, and try to figure things out. Call me tonight if you can and keep me posted on all the developments. Trembling and overwhelmed with many emotions, Hazel hurriedly packed her things and went home. When she drove up to the empty house, everything became clear. The daughters were at her sister's house, a common occurrence when Hazel and I were working. She quickly dialed her sister's number and asked to leave the children for the night. Katie, though curious, readily agreed without asking for an explanation. At six o'clock, when I walked in the door, I smiled weakly and said, Hi, Hazel. I didn't expect to see you today. I assumed that you would be with Jonathan, but he is married and has children. That would really be very embarrassing, I remarked with a touch of sarcasm. David, please, let's talk, she asked, taking my hand and sitting me down next to her on the sofa. Surprisingly, she looked calmer and was much more friendly than usual. In my communication, I foresaw this scenario and continued to play along, continuing to play the charade. David, I received the divorce papers today, as you already know. But do you understand that I don't want to get a divorce? I need you, and I love you, Hazel said sincerely, her voice full of sincerity. I will not sign these papers. Jonathan, he means nothing to me. Yes, we had physical intimacy, but it was devoid of genuine love. I just needed it, and I'm very sorry. I will never do this again, I promise, Hazel pleaded, her voice full of remorse and regret. Oh, you promise? I replied, disbelief and bitterness could be heard in my tone. I guess now I can completely trust you, and we can just forget about everything, returning to our so-called normal life, I added, trying to hide my true feelings behind a facade of a gentle smile. Thanks, baby. I love you very much, Hazel replied, with obvious relief in her voice. I'm grateful to you for forgiving me and understanding. I promise I will never lie to you again. But to my surprise, Hazel didn't seem to notice my sarcasm. She hugged me affectionately, thinking that everything was settled. I staggered back, pushing her away. Are you kidding me? Are you completely crazy, woman? I exclaimed, feeling anger rising in me. I'll never be able to trust you again after all this lies and deception. There's nothing left between us, I said, and there was resentment and anger in my voice. I gave you countless chances, hoping that things would change, but you continued to lie and deceive me causing irreparable damage to our lives. Now I know everything, your secret meetings over lunch at the hotel with the authorities. Did you honestly believe that I would take you back after finding out what you were doing? Have you even thought about the devastating effect this will have on our daughters? I can't forget about this betrayal in any way, and it's very important that you face the consequences, I continued, my voice firm and resolute. Why am I chasing Sinclair and Jonathan? It turns out that your lovers are not just acquaintances. Sinclair is your boss, and Jonathan is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. Their involvement in this false story further underscores the magnitude of your actions. After breaking up with you, I will need financial support to properly take care of our daughters since they played a role in the destruction of our marriage and my life. I intend to hold them accountable. They will face consequences that will be aimed at destroying their family relationships and causing financial damage, as it was with you, I finished. Hazel had never seen me speak in such a tone, and my anger and determination were obvious. The gravity of the situation finally dawned on her, and she realized that she was no longer in control of the situation. Now she could only beg, and tears were streaming down her face. On her knees, she clung to my legs, desperately begging for forgiveness. Listen, Hazel, I said sternly, you need to pack your suitcase and stay at mom's for a few nights. Find yourself a lawyer, and then we can arrange a meeting to discuss our situation. I strongly advise you to stay away from Jason and Jonathan. The situation may change for the worse. Later that evening, at her mom's house, she came up with a story about a small disagreement between us and used it as an excuse to hide with her mother for a few days. But when the clock struck 11 o'clock in the evening, she could no longer restrain her impulse. She picked up the phone and dialed Jonathan's number, hoping to find solace. Jonathan told her to hold on and quickly connected Jason with three interlocutors. Jason, are you here? Sinclair started the conversation. Yes, we're both here, Jason replied. So, Hazel, 
Did you manage to convince him to drop the lawsuits and reconsider the divorce? Hazel's voice faltered as she replied, No, moreover, he kicked me out and warned me to control myself because the situation could become terrible. Sinclair shouted into the phone in anger, Jesus, Jonathan, what have you done? I swear, Hazel, if my family finds out about this, I will make sure that you and Jonathan are punished. I don't care what it takes, but you have to make this situation disappear. Hazel's voice broke into sobs. I can't do anything. He has absolutely no control over himself and refuses to listen to everything I say. He doesn't even bother to answer my calls and texts, she lamented. Sinclair intervened, his tone firm. Jonathan, you have to fix this situation. Arrange a meeting with David. We will meet somewhere in a public place, for example, in a noisy bar where the noise can serve as a cover. Hazel, you'll be there too. You will ask him to withdraw the claim in her presence. If he refuses, Jonathan and I will explain to him and his family members what the possible consequences will be. I have special people at my disposal to resolve such situations, and I will not hesitate to use them to prevent the situation from turning into a continuous spectacle. Jonathan, do it. Jonathan, you understand the gravity of the situation, right? Mr. Sinclair's voice was firm. Yes, Mr. Sinclair, Jonathan replied dutifully. Turning to Hazel, Mr. Sinclair asked, And Hazel, do you understand what you need to do? Clarify, Hazel, Hazel replied, her voice full of determination. Good, do it. Let it happen tomorrow afternoon. We have no time to waste, Mr. Sinclair ordered, his tone urgent. That evening, listening to their desperate conversation, I could not help but formulate my own plan. The next morning, Jonathan contacted me and offered to meet to discuss a settlement agreement. He suggested we meet tonight at 6 p.m. at the shipbuilder's house. I agreed and arrived at the private detective's office by 4 o'clock, fully prepared for the upcoming meeting with Jonathan. Detectives used state-of-the-art technology, including noise-canceling devices, which made it possible to isolate voice frequencies and get clear sound even in noisy conditions. In addition, Bo Pai, my reliable assistant, had to videotape the meeting, providing an additional level of documentation. When I arrived at the appointed meeting place at 6.15 p.m., purposefully arriving later so that Bo Pai could set up the video camera, I noticed Hazel among the people and headed towards her. Hazel, I'm very surprised to see you here, accompanied by two guys. I guess it's clear now where your loyalty lies, I remarked with a note of bitterness in my voice. Turning to the audience, I asked, Gentlemen, what brings us here today? Why are we gathered here? Sinclair stepped forward and spoke on behalf of the audience. I'm Jason Sinclair, and I asked for this meeting. It's interesting to finally meet you in person. Sinclair, the videos I've seen don't quite match your ideas, I have to say. I can't say I'm very pleased to meet you, and with you, Jonathan, a man who was involved with my spouse and played a role in the destruction of my marriage. I can't say I'm pleased to meet any of you, Sinclair intervened. Continuing the conversation, Sinclair said, I understand your anger and frustration, and I can't imagine how difficult this situation must be for you. But it is important for us to discuss this. Please share your thoughts with us. I mentioned that we would appreciate it if you would drop the lawsuits against me, Jonathan, and the company. Is there anything else you would like to discuss? To my disappointment, you replied that the withdrawal of claims is not enough. You think that someone should answer for depriving me of the most precious person in your life. I looked at Hazel and added that she was the woman I loved and the mother of our children. From the realization of this, Hazel burst into tears realizing the seriousness of the harm she had caused. I understand that you want to fix everything and find a solution, but I must stress that Hazel's return is not something I am willing to consider. Trust and love between us have been irreparably destroyed, and it would be unfair to our children to force us to reconcile. As for the lawsuits, I am ready to give them up under certain conditions. First, I ask you to pay me $5 million in compensation for the damage caused. Secondly, I propose to hold a meeting with both your wives and Hazel, at which a full confession will be made. These conditions are important to ensure accountability and openness for all parties involved. If you're ready to fulfill the conditions I mentioned, I am ready to give up these cases. But I must clarify that I cannot agree to the proposed amount of $100,000 and a non-disclosure agreement. 
it is important to realize the seriousness of the situation and ensure the triumph of justice, I stated. I understand your concern about protecting your family, but resorting to threats and violence is not an option. Let's approach this issue fairly and honestly. Given your willingness to negotiate, I am ready to reduce the amount of the settlement agreement to $4 million. This revised proposal reflects my desire to find a solution to the problem while acknowledging the damage caused. Let's try to resolve this issue amicably and move on. I understand that you may be desperately trying to protect your reputation and avoid the consequences of your actions. However, it is important to note that honesty and responsibility are crucial to resolving the situation. I cannot endorse or participate in blackmail or malicious acts in any form. It is not my intention to harm anyone or their family. On the contrary, I believe in the possibility of finding an honest and fair solution for all parties involved. But it's very important that your families are aware of your actions, Sinclair was completely shocked. David, by continuing to act, you are, in fact, prejudging your fate. Take the time to change your mind, drop the charges, and make peace with Hazel. It was just an affair, we can forget about it. I quickly took out my phone and sent two text messages. At the same time, I logged into my email and sent a pre-prepared message. In it, all incriminating videos, images, texts, and messages were now on their way to Hazel's friends, relatives, and colleagues. Two text messages were sent by a courier standing outside Jason and Jonathan's house, pending further instructions. Instructions have been received. Deliver the package soon. Mrs. Sinclair and Mrs. Wilkes found themselves in possession of duplicates of an extensive folder on three rings containing incriminating evidence, photographs, videos, messages, phone records, and much more. Sinclair's patience broke when he turned to me with the words, I'm talking to you. What will be your reaction? Will you drop the charges? My answer to you, Jason, Jonathan, and my unfaithful wife is, go to hell, at that moment, Jason and Jonathan's phones burst into a cacophony of calls. At the other end, their wives anxiously tried to engage them in conversation. Sinclair's face contorted with anger, his complexion turned crimson, and he shot me a venomous look. Jonathan stood paralyzed by shock, tears streaming from his eyes. Hazel, puzzled by what was happening, turned to me and asked, What's the matter? I answered calmly, Check your email in a few minutes, and I think you'll understand everything. The conversation between Sinclair and his wife was suddenly interrupted, and in a fit of anger, he pointed a threatening finger at my chest, shouting, You're a dead man. I'll be happy to watch you die like a dog. With that, he stormed out of the bar. Jonathan stared at me, and there was a question in his voice that startled me, Why? Why did you do this to me? I was stunned by his puzzled question. It seemed incredible to me that he could ask such a meaningless thing. Are you kidding me? Day after day for the past six months, you've been secretly meeting my wife, the woman I love, the mother of our twin daughters, and arranging for her to bond with Sinclair. And yet you have the nerve to be surprised when someone finally strikes back? All the evidence that I shared with your beloved wife was aimed at enlightening her, making her understand that you have destroyed countless destinies. Hazel's phone rang with a symphony of calls. Within a few minutes, her sister, brother, and aunt called. All of them had witnessed the video and photography, and questions were swarming in their heads. Initially pretending to be ignorant, Hazel eventually succumbed to curiosity and opened her email, wanting to know the truth about the chaos I had caused. Her jaw dropped, and a wave of anger swept across her face. How could you do this to me? She snarled, her voice full of betrayal. You made everything so incredibly simple, didn't you, dear? I answered, a mixture of love and disappointment in my voice. I still love you, but our relationship can't be fixed. When I handed over to the authorities and social services, the destroying audio recording from this very meeting, my lawyer assured me that full custody of our girls was very likely. You, on the contrary, will be lucky if you manage to avoid a prison sentence. I'm sorry, Hazel, my once affectionate nickname which you so casually exchanged with your illegal companion. I am well aware of all your misdeeds, my dear princess and the time has come when you will have to face the consequences of your actions. Six months later, Tricom, wishing to avoid further public outcry, decided to settle the lawsuit by paying a significant amount of $2 million. As a result of a gross violation of the morality clause in the contract, 
Jason Sinclair was promptly removed from the position of CEO and dismissed without severance pay. The consequences of his actions were not limited to the loss of a prestigious position, he also lost stock options worth more than $10 million. In addition, after a thorough investigation of his activities, Sinclair was sentenced to five years in prison for conspiracy to commit murder, as well as on a number of other charges related to his illegal activities during his time behind bars. His wife filed for divorce, which dealt him a heavy financial blow. Having lost his fortune, he left prison without means of livelihood, without a family, and without a home. After learning about this, I felt a little satisfaction. Similarly, Mrs. Wilkes broke off her relationship with Jonathan, leaving him in a difficult situation, without financial support, without housing, burdened with huge alimony and child support payments. He found himself facing a bleak future. The civil trial further aggravated his situation, as he was fined $1 million for participation in collusion, adultery, and the breakdown of marital relations. After losing his job, he began to resort to hard day labor to make ends meet. Hazel was sentenced to five years in prison, but thanks to her mother's help, the sentence was reduced to one year of house arrest and four years of probation in connection with her participation in the conspiracy. Unfortunately, she failed in the fight for custody of the children. The divorce process was not in her favor because of the evidence against her and the nature of the crime she committed. Since the house belonged to me, Hazel was homeless. It is worth noting that before she was fired, she earned the same as I did, which means that it was not possible to receive alimony. As a result, Hazel has fallen into a deep depression and is currently living in her mother's basement. Unfortunately, the family became estranged from Hazel because of her act. The contents of the letter I sent, as well as the videos and photos attached to it, had disastrous consequences for Hazel as they led to the deprivation of her right to see her children. The unpleasant sides of Hazel's character, previously unknown to everyone, were laid bare in this message. The intended result was achieved, the support system of the Hazel family was completely destroyed. Unfortunately, Hazel cannot get forgiveness even from herself, as she is currently taking medication to cope with the consequences. Over the past six months, she has repeatedly been in psychiatric hospitals, trying to come to terms with the fact that she played a role in the destruction of several marriages. The burden of guilt weighs on her, and forgiving herself remains an elusive goal. As a result, I took care of our daughters, devoting all my time and attention to them. Fortunately, they found solace in the unwavering support of my sister and mother, forming a powerful support group. Despite the traumatic episode, I am sure that the girls will overcome any consequences and come out of this difficult period viable and strong.